All right, so thank you again for joining us. I want to introduce uh, Dr. Lou from City of Hope. We partnered together on a few programs here at KGI and I'm so excited to have her share um, her experience at City of Hope with you here today and, and all about uh, what they do. So take it away, Dr. Lou, and, and thank you again for joining us. Oh, and sorry, one last thing, please feel free to pop questions in the chat if you have any. Um, and then I think we'll also have some time towards the end. If you wanna unmute and ask a question on your own, you can do that as well. Okay. So thanks again. Great, thank you, Lexi. Yeah, so um, so um, uh, really glad to have this opportunity. Again, so, um, this is probably the, the first uh, years I do this uh, um, uh, presentation. So very excited to meet uh, all the young uh, students and potentially interested in biomedical sciences. And um, I wanted to use this opportunity to kind of uh, talk a little bit about where um, the, the institution I'm in and which is uh, City of Hope Comprehensive Cancer Center. So uh, most people probably know about City of Hope as a, a cancer hospital, but there's a lot more than um, we treat patients. So um, there are a lot of exciting uh, uh, research going on and even with clinical trials. And, and this is uh, the time site I'm hoping to introduce uh, uh, the, the institutions and, and let you know more about, about what we do. So I currently is, uh, I have a couple jobs there. So uh, my primary job is a professor and associate chair in the Department of Cancer Genetic and Epigenetic. So my department is a, a very, very basic science uh, a department, but I wanted to, uh, in my talk, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how at City of Hope we were able to use, uh, uh, there was an opportunity for uh, people like us uh, doing basic science to translate uh, what we learned about biology into um, potentially uh, cancer treatments or any kind of disease treatments. Okay, so I have another role, which is the vice dean of our uh, graduate school of biological sciences, and which is primarily uh, we have a master program, which is a uh, you know we're we're very very um, you know. Uh, 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 excited with the, you know this uh, partnerships with KGI, so I'm going to also kind of uh, mention a little bit about uh, uh, that, and as well as uh, the, the as you can see the co director with Dr. Levinton said some of you probably met her uh, with uh, for the Master of Science in Translational Medicine in, and the Regulatory Affair, which is the the uh, new program that we co uh, that we have together. So. Um, Okay, so um, so you know, I wanted I was I wanted to keep this very informal, so, and I I love to kind of talk a little bit about the history, um, about you know uh, about you know a, a place, and and so so um, it, it's 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 always very exciting to know the um the, what what the backgrounds of uh, uh, any kind of institution. So. Um, City, City of Hope, I think that most of you guys, are you guys all like in the California or Southern California or it's everywhere, it's all over the, 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 uh, the country. So um, if you are familiar with the Southern California, it's huge. And then so the, the whole LA metropolitan area is, is, uh, is huge. So Duarte is a little bit like, it's the east of, um, of uh, uh, Downtown Los Angeles, so it's it's a little bit west of uh, KGI, uh, so west of Pomona. So um, back in the you know, hundred years ago, uh, this is a place where uh, it's it's like wild wild west. There's nothing going on here. So you can see that you know there's a picture of what it used to look like. Um, so uh, back in the 1913. Uh, that's when the uh, when uh, the uh, CEO was born. So it was first established with a couple of tents uh, back then because of uh, their um, at the time. So there's a a, 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 a a lot of patients with the TBs and and you know at the time the, the, the cure is still like you know poor. So so of course it's infectious disease and everybody is scared. So. 
Um, so they decided, I guess I'm not quite sure whether the cities or, or you know, uh, or uh, uh, people like, you know, they decided. So um, let's put all these TB patients somewhere in the very east where nobody is there. OK, so so the idea, you know, so it's that it's, it's less, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, dangerous for for like people living in Los Angeles area. So because they are far away and also um, the idea also that because if if you know about the geography of uh, Southern California, so the east side is a little bit more like a desert kind of um, uh, weather, so it's dry. So they say that it's better for the TP patients where their their respiratory, um, uh, uh, you know, to to help them, you know, breathe and that kind of thing. So that's where that's when um, uh, City Hall was first, uh, you know, established as a sanatorium. Um, so um, this is a you know it is a it's a, a kind of small community. So I wanted to pull out this uh, message uh, in 1915, um, why it's become, it's called City of Hope. So, so it was a, a renamed from sanatorium to City of Hope is because um, uh, as quoted, there are many of our friends who believe the sanatorium can be something like a camp, having a few camp is tips. This we wish to say that our little institution is practically a little township, a little city for itself. Many of patients love to call it the town of hope because this is the place where they hope that they will be able to get cured. So this is just like, you know, images of, you know, the medical staff at the times, as well as like, you know, you can see that how they were, they were, um, they were, they were trying to get the patient um, you know, sort of sitting under the sun to help the breathing. Um, so these are some statistics of how they, you know, they, their treatments, uh, how many patients they have uh, during that time for TB. So this at the time is purely for, for, for treating TB patients. So eventually TB become like, you know, be, become uh, uh, the, the, the disease become under controls and you have uh, the, the, the vaccines. And so, so um, the, the, there's less and less of uh, the, the needs for, for um, you know, the, the hospital to treat just purely for TB. So, so that's when it, it become transition, eventually transition into a cancer hospital. Um, so I wanted to just show you some of the architecture Architectures of uh, City of Hope, uh, just to see how drastic change in a hundred years, and so um, City of Hope is kind of like an interesting campus. Even though we are not university, so we still call us campus because we have, of course, graduate school, we have research institutes, and you can see that it's a combination of like a very modern um, uh, architecture. So we have some of the. Um, award-winning architectures, uh, uh, designs that you can see this, uh, um, uh, uh, this uh, sort of, it's, it's a Kaplan building, it's kind of like a museum. And so, and also it is also auditorium. So, and we also have like, you know, um, like for example, the Japanese gardens where, because we have patients and, and living on campus. And so this is a, a place where they, they can, you know, uh, they can go there and then sort of have a piece of um, uh, environment just to, to enjoy the, um, the afternoon. Um, so, so, and then, but we also have like, of course, like, you know, uh, 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 we, uh, the medical centers uh, in the upper center, this uh, building was just built. So um, uh, this couple of years, uh, City of Hope has been uh, under a lot of construction. We now also have our own hotel, um, the party for uh, uh, like, for the families who may have to have their um, their uh, the patients to uh, you know do uh, long treatments and then so they have to have somewhere to stay so we have our own hotel so so it's a really you know um, uh, it's I think it's a really uh, beautiful campus and uh, it's a kind of unique and it's different uh, from a typical uh, university setting so um, CEO Hope. It's called Comprehensive Center. So most people probably kind of know about the hospital side, but I wanted to kind of just uh, tell you that that um, 
the serial hub is almost like an enterprise. It has uh, several components, and it's it's a uh, it's a primary component for the past seventy five years. Is um it's it's a uh, primarily a medical center. So the medical center is where, like you know, it, it, it kind of transitioned as what I say is from the you know sanatorium, and it become cancer centers and cancer hospitals, and we also have diabetes uh, treatments in as well. So um this is a, this is a core of uh, uh, City of Hope. But one of the, uh, another components of Med uh, City of Hope is, uh, is Batman Research Institute, which I'm going to kind of uh, uh, mention to, to tell you more about it. Um, this is the major driver for the, uh, for the research, ongoing research at City of Hope. Um, so we have about um, 18 research department uh, so uh, almost hundred uh, professor, and so and um, and in addition to that, we have several research staff. We also have, of course, a PhD and master students, and and this is where our graduate schools um, sort of the host. And we are part of the Batman Research Institute of City of Hope. So, um, in addition to so for the uh, for uh, 70, 75 years, the uh, City of Hope is primarily. Uh, with the medical centers and Batman Research Institute. About five years ago, we acquired um, uh, Tekin, uh, which is located uh, at Phoenix, Arizona. So this uh, acquisition is, is so important for uh, CEO because uh, um, the current, you know, the, as, uh, the um, medical treatment now, especially cancer, is uh, moving toward precision medicine, personalized medicine, because um, some of you may know that our genetic composition is going to make a, a big difference whether or not we, you know, we, uh, we, um, uh, we will respond to certain treatments. So, so even if, you know, two people who has um, breast cancer, they not necessarily will respond to the same treatment uh, equally. And a lot of genetic factor is going to contribute to that. So when we have a uh, you know, patient coming in, and then one of the key things is that, you know, when we have surgery or chemo treatments, and we will also like isolate the tumors, uh, uh, cancer samples. We will send it to do bioinformatic analysis. It's mostly genetic analysis to identify what kind of mutation that, that this tumor has. And it, so not only to kind of help in terms of uh, future research, for example, that's how ankle genes is identified genetic risk factor. If you see certain tumors, certain type of tumor always have this genetic mutation that kind of indicate that that gene mutation may be linked to the source of this type particular tumor, as well as if you have certain mutation, for example, KRAS. KRAS mutation, there is specific mutation that there is clinical trial has medicine that will be able to treat that particular mutation in, um, in KRAS. So this is going to be tremendous uh, important information during the treatments and, and, um, and, and follow up. So TGEN has this capacity to for us to be able to like um, do bioinformatic sequencing of uh, uh, large samples. And it, uh, that's also the, the cumulative that has allowed the researcher to be able to do further study. Um, and so, so that is a, that's a very important component. Mm -hmm. And then and this year, we also uh, expand the, uh, the enterprise to, to acquire um, Cancer Treatment Center of America. And so this, uh, this uh, um, uh, cancer centers uh, is located, has different branch uh, in Atlanta, in Chicago, and Phoenix. So, so this allowed uh, City of Hope to expand the, the, our, our ability to, um, to impact cancer treatments uh, to basically uh, further to not just limited to California or or West uh, uh, US, but you know extended to Chicago to Atlanta, and so currently this is primarily. Um, uh, patient-driven uh, uh, location, but there will be a potential opportunity for research, research um, a laboratory expansion to those areas. So, so we can also like, you know, um, um, helping the education in biomedical science further to across the country. So I wanted to kind of mention mostly about the Batman Research Institute. So, um, 
if you have experience in, in doing uh, laboratory research, you probably have you know, noticed some of the equipments in the laboratory, for example, the ultra centrifuge, the spectrometry, uh, spectrometer. So, so there are Batman instruments. So this is, a, this, is, this is a guy who graduated from Caltech and he's an instrumentals in a lot of uh, 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 biomedical research, bio biology research equipment. Um, he's an inventor. So of course he, he's a passionate about like bio, bio research, biomed uh, biological, uh, chemical research. So he developed all these instruments that allow us to do a lot of research um, in the laboratory. And so as a billionaire, and uh, you know, he is also very, very you know interested in in impact putting uh, you know putting his impact to future research so he decided to he and his wife um, Arnold and uh, Arnold and uh, Mabel so they as shown in the picture here they decided to um, establish Beckman Foundation so so this is the money that they put into develop uh, to establish uh, Batman research institutes um, that is primarily focused on um, uh, research that can um, help um, uh, prevention and cure of any kind of diseases. Okay, so you know we CEO was very fortunate to be the very first uh, uh, place that uh, that Batman decided to build the Batman Research Institute. At. So this is uh, so um, Batman Research Institute at Sea Hope is established in 1983. So um, uh, following years, um, uh, Batman Foundation also established uh, 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 five additional institutes in uh, UC Irvine, uh, National Academy of Science, uh, University of Illinois, Stanford University, and Caltech. So, so the Batman Research Institute is considered one of the most prestigious institutes that is, is it's it's a different from university. So it's not it's not a, a it's not primarily for education, but it's building for research um, uh, a laboratory. Okay. So um, so I wanted to so this is just how um, that. That um, that CEO was able to advance uh, research like um, uh, uh, within the comprehensive cancer centers just because of the Batman Foundation's establishing of the Batman Research Institute. So um, the area of uh, um, our focus is uh, you know of course we are cancer uh, center um, so. The cancer uh, study is definitely one of the top um, uh, important uh, 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 area of the research focus. But in addition to that, we actually also have other, um, uh, we are also focusing on other diseases, including AIDS and pathogens. So um, uh, when the pandemic started, the COVID pandemic started, um, CEO actually have a, a, a COVID vaccine. And currently it's in, it, so it's, it's being optimized for, for the, uh, the clinical trial. It's a different, it, it's, it's a, a little bit different from what you um, know of Pfizer's and, and Moderna's mRNA-based uh, vaccination uh, vaccine. And our vaccine is more protein-based, but this one actually, uh, uh, um, current clinical trials show that it, it help last the immune response a lot longer. So, so we are currently expanding the clinical trial in uh, other in the international countries. That, so, um, so also one of the things I see your hope is it has a lot of collaboration uh, internationally, including uh, uh, Asia's and uh, South America's as well as currently we're expanding to, to Africa as well. Okay, so these are our focus. And, and in fact, this, uh, this, this is uh, one of our faculty. She's the director, Dr. David Thurman. She's the director of our um, Diabetes Institute. And this is Kule, who is uh, our uh, joint program, MSTN uh, uh, program student graduate. And she's currently a, a PhD student at City of Hope. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, City of Hope has a, a you know, it, one of the things that research uh, uh, require funding. And even with the Batman, you know, foundation uh, provide the seed money to establish the institute, one of the, the key things to, to, you know, look at how well the research of the, a specific institute is, is to look at their, their funding, because funding mostly is from federal. And, um, uh, and NIH won't give you money unless you have a, a fantastic 
uh, track record of uh, research productivity uh, investment. So, um, so I would say that you know that see the hope uh, per faculty. Um, uh, capital. So, so based on the grant money that bring in per per faculty, is one of the top four in California. So it's along with like Stanford's uh, and uh, UCS and UCLA. So um, even though of course that UCLA and UCSF, there are much bigger universities, so they have more faculty. Um, but per capita, we are actually very competitive to 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 those uh, top institutes. So so we are very very. Very proud of our records of uh, bringing the NIH founded cancer uh, uh, research um, uh, funding, and we also have other uh, funding as well. Um, so this is just mainly for uh, to show the, the cancer related funding. So see your hope is uh, we we emphasize what we call the pipeline from bench side to best side. So. Um, some of you probably, if you uh, go through the, the short program, you learn about how you know um, drug discoveries. You first you have to identify uh, what to target, and and you have to understand the biology of the the pathway, and then to understand what you need to, which one is the best op option. You also need to, if it is a protein, you also and you need to understand the structure, the chemistry of the proteins, and then, and then to understand okay, if you want to do establish a you identify small molecules where in the proteins you're going to target. Okay, so so we have a lot of basic research that's including myself that study the um, the, the biological pathway, study the the very fundamental biology of how things work in the cells, and then then, then from there we then say okay when things go wrong, so that's when you know disease happen. So, so the, the, the etiology, so we have a quite a lot, but at the same time, once you study this, then, then I, that'll help you to identify uh, a potential protein that you can target. So, um, and so we have basic uh, uh, research that's, uh, that's, uh, um, uh, that help to, uh, to help identify target. We also have, uh, then the next step is that we have a chemist, a medicinal chemist, um, who are um, uh, focused on uh, drug discovery, uh, drug uh, development. So, so these are these are platforms or, or laboratories that has chemistry backgrounds that or or um, some kind of uh, uh, bioinformatics that we were able to um, either develop uh, uh, small molecules or large biological uh, bio biologics. For example, immunotherapy now is a really important um, aspect of uh, of uh, cancer therapy. So. Um, so we have a, a laboratories that that develop a, 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 a small molecules as well as antibody that specifically targeting um, certain diseases of like certain kind of um, uh, like for example cancer cells, and then um, so so there is a. a uh, uh, research groups that focus on the drug discovery part and. Sometimes when we identify a small molecule, so um, what do you need to do is for next thing you have to do preclinical study, you have to do clinical trials. So uh, a lot of university, they will need to go with, uh, you know, maybe uh, uh, reach out to pharma and to see, to, to see if any pharma is interested in collaboration to do preclinical trial or early phase clinical studies. And, and CEO Hovestry was able to have this capacity to do preclinical study in our own institutes. And so we have a, um, a GMP uh, facility that can produce uh, a drug uh, quality uh, type of molecules that, that, is, uh, that is allow us to uh, do a clinical trial on in-house. So, so this is what, you know, the pipeline said that City of Hope is was the research components that we were able to do what we call it from bench side. We study the, 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 the biology all the way to bring the, the potential therapeutic um, uh, molecules to the, to the best side. So we, we have one of the, the most uh, uh, high numbers of clinical trials um, around the United States, um, and also collaborations of uh, clinical trials in um, uh, with the, the pharmaceutical company. Okay, so mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of like you know 
use a very simple example how you know the research going on here at Cedar Home can we can do something for people like me who don't don't have experience of clinical trials drug developments but we have such a fantastic collaboration that allow me to bring the insights that I'm studying and then to develop potential drugs. So, so one of the one of the um, the molecules that we are uh, working on is called the PARG proteins, which is uh, important for uh, modulating a. a a post translational modification of a of enzyme. This post translational modification is called poly ADP ribosylation. So, and so poly ADP ribosylation. Um, uh, this uh, this modification is 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 has been like a key hot area in cancer therapy. Um, mm -hmm. And this is because that um, if you do, um, if you go through, so most of the, uh, so radiation and chemotherapies are, are two of the most common um, cancer therapeutic uh, uh, strategy um, for a lot of different kinds of cancer. And so the ways that they kill cancer cells is uh, because of chemo drugs and also radiation is, is making a huge amount of damages to your DNA. Okay, so so uh, this is just an example of a apartment-based uh, chemotherapy. Um, that the the drug is basically uh, cause uh, uh, what we call a single strand DNA breaks or double strand DNA breaks in your DNA. So we all know that you know for a cell to survive to function, you need to have intact DNA. If your DNA is broken, has all this break. So when you when cancer cells need to replicate, they have to replicate their DNA. If the DNA is broken, it, the, the replication cannot, cannot happen. It will stop. So that's how you kill cells. Um, so, so these are very toxic damages to the cells, especially growing cells. So that so this is how radiation and, and chemo drugs cause cell, cancer cells to die. Of course, your, your body has a way to repair damages. We constantly go out to the sun, you, you, you walk out to outdoor. So you are exposed to sun, great, you get a suntan, but you always have been told that, okay, you need to put on sunscreen because you will need to protect yourself from the UV damage. What is UV damage? UV damage is causing DNA damages. So, so that's why UV, so if you create a lot of damages to the cells, you know, a service is cell death. So, so your skin is going to deteriorate, so, you know, uh, aging a lot faster. And as well as that you can potentially um, also increase the risk of, um, of a, a skin cancer. So this is because damages could either cause the cell to die or it can cause mutation. And so the, the cell size ability to, to repair your, your this kind of different kind of damage. Otherwise, most of us will not survive just under the sun for like 10 minutes. Okay, we'll all die very quick. So um, in, in your cells, uh, there is comprehensive, uh, uh, oh, there will be like a uh, uh, hundred, hundred proteins involved in, in repair damage. So, so the cancer cells has a rely on the, all these proteins to be able to like, you know, repair the damages and so they can survive. So one of the proteins, so one set of protein called BRCA1, so you, you probably may heard about this, uh, this uh, genes, uh, um, some, of the, uh, some of the very famous uh, actors, uh, Hollywood actors, uh, Angelia Jolie has a BRCA1 mutation that caused that, that so her cells were not able to repair damages very um, you know, efficiently. So, that, so that's why she has a high risk of ovarian and breast cancer. And so, so this, uh, so because BRCA1 and 2 is important for repairing double strand break. And there's also a, a protein called PARP. So this is a part, it's, it's an insight involved in pyrrolating protein for signal transduction for activating some, some cell function. So this is a protein is important for single strand break repair. So if your cancer cell has all this protein, it can survive, but cancer is harder to kill this cancer cell by radiation and chemotherapy. So, 
Um, the, so there is so even, even though that's why DNA repair enzyme is very important for um, for uh, uh, to keep your cell function. But when you have cancer, DNA repair is a very is a fantastic target for uh, for killing cancer cells. Okay, so so there are individuals who has BRCA one uh, BRCA two mutation, so they were not able to repair double strand break, so they have high risk of developing cancer. But at the same time, when they have cancer, then um, their cell is very easy to get killed by the chemotherapy. And so, but then they have PARP as well. They, they may have functional PARP that can repair single strand break. So what happened is that um, the researcher found that, that um, if you inhibit PARP and then the single strand breaks cannot be repaired as well. So all this single strand break will eventually convert it to double strand break. And in the BRCA1 mutation uh, patients, they, they cannot repair. So you kill cancer cells a lot faster by combining PARP inhibitors with patterning up with chemotherapy. So, so PARP has been, um, so I personally know uh, no friends and family that has BRCA1 mutations and that they were, the PARP is like a miracle drug that um, ovarian cancer stage four, uh, five years, uh, Fire survival is poor, it's 30%. But you, with the PARP inhibitors, it was able to, to extend a, a, a lot longer. However, it's not a bulletproof. So I wanted to, to just quickly say that, the, the, so the way that PARP1 work is that, that um, it, it parallel itself during, uh, when there is a single strand break, it parallel itself um, uh, to put this uh, a poly ribose chain on it itself, um, which is shown as like a card in this carton is the purple, purple um, uh, circle. And this uh, purple chains will mm. able to um, recruit several other DNA repair factors into onto this uh, damage side. So, so then this DNA damage uh, uh, repair factor can then act on this single strand break and then repair uh, to make sure that it 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 it, it, it get it, it become normal. So imagine if you treat a, a cancer cell that has a single strand break with a PARP inhibitor. Uh, the PAR protein cannot parlay itself. So repair protein doesn't know where to go. It cannot repair this single strand break. So it becomes double strand break and the cell die. That's how it works. So the problem is that eventually, as I say that it's a miracle drug, but um, the, the drug have, right now has, I think that it's been FDA approved for, for, uh, for therapy in the past 10 years, but, but more recently, there's more and more uh, cases where patients patient develop um, uh, resistance to PARP inhibitor. So that is the, one of the key reasons was because there are several PARP. So this is called PARP1. There are other PARP proteins in the, your cell. They kind of start to, to take over the, the function and it help. So, so it become resistant. So, um, so our, our laboratory, my laboratory, one of the key area we study is DNA repair. So we realized that there is another protein that may be able to, for us to develop drugs to target. This is called PARG. So for, for the single strand break uh, DNA repair factor, once it's get recruited, um, the next thing that needs to happen is that the part protein needs to be deparlated by removing all this uh, purple circle the, the, and the, the modification. So that will release this uh, repair factors uh, from binding to this, uh, this uh, modification. So, so they can now bind to DNA and actually repair. If you don't deparlate the part one at the second stage, um, this will stuck. So you will, so that, so you, you still cannot repair. Okay, so the, the, the job cannot be done. So we, we thought that, okay, PARG is an alternative to, to, um, to inhibit this pathway in a chemotherapy. And the nice thing is that there's only one PARG, there's no other PARG parallel. So if we can inhibit PARG, it, 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 it basically kills this, this pathway. 
Okay, so this is what we currently have. Um, so we, so with the collaboration with Dr. Dave Force, with a chemist, uh, medicinal chemist in a City of Hope, and as well as Dr. William Gothers in Caltech. So we actually have a couple of a very promising small molecule now that is in, 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 in that can inhibit PARG in vitro and as well as in the cell culture. So the next step is for us to, uh, to, to bring it to the animal models and then, and then also examine in the xenograph model and also toxicity. So we are very excited about that. So so this is what I you know I, I wanted to to kind of like um, bring you an example of how uh, me myself who is you know study enzymology cell study cell biology but we're able to bring our use our knowledge to make to to identify potentially uh, uh, future drugs for 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 cancer therapy. So um, and this is the exciting part about being a part of the City of Hope. So, so um, in, in terms of the, the clinical trial, so we also have a, a several um, a drugs that, uh, that's listed here. Right? Let me see. So uh, for example, like, you know, the, um, there, are, there are currently 65, uh, uh, 69 um, uh, uh, first in human trials open uh, at City of Hope. And out of these 69, so of course we have a lot of uh, collaboration with industry in terms of uh, clinical trial, but 29 of these are, are City of Hope that develop the um, uh, uh, molecules. So one of the things I wanted to also mention is that most of you guys will probably know about like what insulin does. Right. So, you know, it's, it's one of the, 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 the key, key molecule to uh, the synthesis of insulin is, is one of the key molecules to help uh, 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 treat the diabetes. And, and a synthetic insulin is actually um, a developed by CD Hope. Um, and so as the humanized monoclonal antibody um, that, uh, that's uh, being used in, in most of it, this technology is, is also developed by City of Hope and is now it, it's contribute to, to, um, to a lot of uh, uh, in, uh, immunotherapeutic um, strategies now that the industry is used. So these are the, the things that a lot of people didn't realize how like a CEO home, even though it's a cancer center, it's hospitals, but our research has so much impact already um, in not just the cancer therapy, but also in diabetes field. Okay, so, um, and this is the GMP, so enable again, as I mentioned, that enable for us to be able to do clinical trial in-house. We have to have uh, the facility that can allow us to produce, for example, like, you know, um, the small molecule. Sometimes we have like RNA-based uh, therapies, um, oligonucleotide therapy. That's one of the very big things uh, at, at City of Hopes um, that we need to produce um, uh, 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 the the sort of human grace so that that the the purity that is uh is uh, uh uh allow us to do the clinical trial uh, to put into let's put it the other way put it into the human body okay so um so this is also one of the unique things at the city hall um so I wanted to kind of also like you know uh, uh, switch a little bit to the education part because that's one of the things that I'm passionate about about it when as a, one uh, a part another part of my my um, my uh, responsibility as you hope is the education so um, with uh, I talk about all this research going on in you know at CU hope that's from bench side to best side basic research drug discovery to preclinical clinical trial so we have uh, you know uh, uh, more than 100 research laboratories at Batman Research Institute, but we also have a collaboration, a lot of clinic, clinician, clinical faculty at the medical centers where a lot of this is, has to be collaboration. Okay, so some of the clinical faculties also, um, uh, also our uh, graduate school faculties because we in, it's important that that for enable for this pipeline to work, we have to have a lot of communication, and this is one of the very different things that the as a so I was a I was a assistant professor I started my research career independent research careers as an assistant professor at Yale Medical School. So Yale, of course, has a comprehensive cancer center. But um, it was until I was recruited to see how I was able to actually have this experience of this pipeline. The, the connection is a lot stronger uh, between the research side and the medical side. 
And so, so enable for us to the laboratory, you know, research, a, a, a big focus of the research is training, training young generation uh, scientists. So e education is a key component for, for CEO Hope's mission. Um, if you look at the mission statement, it's uh, for our CEO Hope is research is about teamwork and building a research team require education training at the postgraduate level. Um, and in fact, actually in, in addition, we even though we are graduate school, but we also involve, we also uh, 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 do a lot of uh, high school um, and, and undergraduate um, uh, 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 summer research programs uh, training uh, uh, opportunity. So, so um, I run a Manila Graduate School of Biological Sciences established. It's, it's a young graduate school, it's about 25 years old. Um, so one of the nice things we are proud of is that because it's young and it's new, it's, it's also small. Uh, our faculty to student ratio is you, it's, uh, you, you imagine we have about like, you know, a, a total right now about 100 graduate student, that's including master and PhD students. Um, and then we have more than, we have close to 200 faculty. So, so the student to faculty ratio is fantastic. That's very, that's, that's rare for a, a lot of university. So um, the, 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 the goal is really to take, uh, to help bio, biology graduate, undergraduate, and then, then to take them to provide opportunity to train them into uh, become the next generation scientists in academia and industry. I'm sorry about the 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 uh, the there are some noises outside. So enable for that is that's where uh, we decided to establish uh, this biological science graduate school uh, 25 years ago, um, and the um, so currently we have uh, four. Uh, uh, Program. So we have two PhD program and two master programs. So master in translational medicine and as well as master in regulatory affairs is a joint program to KGI. And um, so the, the emphasis of the two program is different. Um, and so the master in translational medicine is focusing on providing opportunity for for um, for uh, uh, undergraduate. Uh, uh, biology or, or chemistry graduates who um, kind of wanted to explore the potential of uh, um, involving a career in research, and but not quite sure yet. So going through master program allow it one year one this this very intense um, uh, uh, thesis research studies and um, at the, uh, the laboratories and then to figure out if this is the right pathway. And also we also have a lot because uh, the the clinical size. Um, the, uh, a lot of times the students wanted to go to medical school, but they wanted to have that ability to do uh, research. So um, sometimes we have uh, uh, MD clinical faculty actually have very successful uh, laboratory. So our, um, our provost, Dr. Steve Rosen, who is also the director of Cancer Center, um, he is a MD trained, but he has a very successful very well-founded NIH-founded laboratory. Um, and so as our medical center um, uh, president, Dr. Michael Caragiri, so actually one of our uh, MSTN graduates is, is, is doing research, was doing research at uh, Dr. Caragiri's uh, uh, laboratories and so uh, doing immunotherapy. So, so the, the idea for the, uh, the to provide the, uh, the students um, the opportunity who may be interested in potential a doctoral degree in PhD or 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 medical school to gain some experience in in the um, in the uh, research training uh, uh, for you know in a master degree level um, and the regulatory affairs. So as I mentioned, that we have so many clinical trial, preclinical clinical trial. We also have industry sponsored collaboration. So. There is a huge demand on the on the the protocol FDA uh, protocol written and and follow the policy and then writing our clinical trials following up the the reporting. So this has become a uh, you know in the past the the, F, uh, the past pandemic these three years. Uh, the general public become more and more aware about how the drugs have been approved and, and what is the necessary step. It's very complicated. And in a very, you know, maybe 10, 20 years ago, 
um, you do not need a, a former degree to uh, to to uh, be able to master the regulatory affair. Um, but more and more, the recent clinical trials and people involved, they because of the complication of the policy, so so they are there. The requirement become the master levels. Um, uh, uh, is is become a, a, a almost a requirement. So. We, we have a lot of training opportunity at City Hall because of the mass amount of clinical trial. So uh, we, did, we decided that this is a great opportunity to engage uh, 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 students into this training program. And so we uh, collaborate with the KGI who has a fantastic courses to, to, be, to provide the, the, the fundamental background knowledge that you learn from the, uh, from the courses. And then, then, then you can take it to see a hope to get engaged in, in the actual clinical trial FDA approval process. So, so this is how the education coming into helped the pipelines. And so it's a two-way thing. So the students is helping um, the, the institute to achieve the benchmark to, uh, to best side pilot. At the same time, in the process, the institute um, help to train the scientists that can go move on to academia or industry. Okay, so uh, the graduate school is a. Uh, um, uh, I want. I just wanted to quickly is uh, just mention that it is a young graduate school. It's established by our founding dean, Dr. Arik, who is the who is the the, the person who responsible um, in in the uh, in the synthetic insulin. So so he contributed to uh, the research side, and he he also is one of the most generous um, uh, uh, philanthropists we have ever met. Um, he donated millions and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars to City of Hope, um, even though he himself was living a very, very like um, uh, ordinary life. And so unfortunately, uh, sadly, he passed away um, earlier this year. And um, so he has a legacy that I, I believe that KGI also, um, you know, um, has uh, been, uh, been, been um, you know, one of the, the people affected by his uh, his his philanthropy impact uh, greatly. So um, so he is passionate about the the the, grad, the education program. So he was uh, Dr. John Rossi established the, the graduate school, um, and so eventually the graduate school is accredited by the WASC. Um, and and Dr. R. Rick and he's a postdoc um, uh, who like uh, co co developed the uh, the humanizer. Uh, mouse uh, uh, monoclonal antibodies uh, uh, enable for for immunotherapy. Um, so they they both donate the five million dollars to to the uh, to the CEO to to establish these graduate school academic centers, and also in a in a um, in nineteen in two thousand nine. So. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Morgan Chu, uh, who is actually a lawyer, um, and his law firm is called Ira and Manila LLP, um, which is what the graduate school named after. So you will wonder, so why were we actually named after a, a, a law firm? So um, at the time, I, um, it, it was uh, there was a lawsuit, uh, there was a dis uh, dispute between uh, Dr. R. Riggs uh, uh, and also Janetta, who is the, who, um, the pattern to genetic on the synthetic insulin. And they, um, so, so um, uh, Morgan, Mr. Morgan Chu was the ones that helped uh, uh, Dr. Ari to win the lawsuit against the genetic on the, on the, uh, the, 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 the patent uh, uh, ownership. And so the settlements that is the biggest uh, at the times for the, uh, for the patent law uh, is similar and, and so um, in the history. And so, um, and that, uh, Mr. Morgan Chu, has a has two very even though he's not he's not science oriented but he's very passionate about science because he has two very very famous brother so um so one is a, a one of them is is a nobel laureate uh, in physics and he also served as a a, 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 a scientist advisor for i believe in for for uh for obama 
uh, uh, administration. So he has uh, two brothers, one of and then there's another brother actually in the DNA repair field in Stanford University. So so Dr. Mr. Morgan Chu's, even though he's not a, a, a lawyer, but he is passionate about education in biomedical research. So he decided to, you know, because of this, this, uh, this uh, lawsuit that he helped with the city hall. So um, he, he, he said that we need to, you know, build a strong education program uh, for, for graduate school, for a city of hope. So he donated an amazing amount of money, endowments to, so, and that's what um, the, the, the institute decided to rename the graduate school after Ira and Manila. So he still continued to make contribution to our um, institute. So, mm -hmm. um, so, um, and then in, in 2018, um, so uh, KGIC Hope decided, so we have been um, mostly uh, just the PhD program, uh, but we, we see the need to uh, provide a master level of training uh, for both the medical oriented uh, researchers as well as the uh, maybe that people who may not want to, may wanted to have a try. Uh, for the PhD before the PhD program, um, so so we established this master in translational medicine, and uh, me myself and uh, Dr. Debbie Ant is uh, uh, has been appointed as the the new team back in twenty nineteen. So so since then we also uh, established a PhD in translational medicine. Uh, this is the program specifically for the uh, master in translational medicine graduate. We saw a lot of fantastic graduates and and they're. PI say we wanted the student to stay and then as a PhD student we want to continue training to a best level so this is the this is the path that allowed the student directly um, uh, stay and then transition to the PhD program and accelerate um, uh, by skipping some of the courses that usually require for for normal PhD program so this is how confident we are with our our master graduate um, and then also uh, this year was the first uh, years that we have the Master in translational medicine. Mm -hmm. So, um, so this is uh, just uh, uh, some of the highlights of our alumni. And, and uh, we have alumni, even though again it's a young graduate school, but we have alumni who is all four for professor at University of Missouri. Uh, also associated in Stanford, we have um, we have of course a junior faculty at the uh, UC Irvine, Case Western, UT uh, Austin, and we also have. Um, uh, people going to industry as well. We have BP in the, uh, even in the industry CEO um, as well. So uh, we also have a, ju uh, uh, a more a junior levels that, that just come in and uh, we're like in, in uh, big pharmaceutical company. So, so our goal is to educate the, and training students, you know, who, um, you know, we are, we, we're, whichever path they wanted to go. So, so this is, we are very proud of our, our achievements. And then, so this is just an example of like, you know, just this year's, uh, again, uh, our, each of our, our um, every year, our PhD program has about 15 students. We only uh, admit 15 to 20 students. Um, and so, so just this year's, uh, you know, we have, this is a first author, just, just the students with first author paper. Okay, so we don't count even like uh, there's additional papers that co-author, and um, some of the paper was featured in the in the cover. So um, and we also have a publication even in science. So we, you also know that that's the that's the gold standards of the the scientific publication and as well as the pre-doctoral fellowship. So with that, I know that you know that we have. Um, I wanted to leave uh, some some time to to answer questions uh, if you have. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Liu. And again, if you have any questions, you can either pop them in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask whatever you're more comfortable with. And also, you know, I'm happy, you know, to if uh, you know after the seminars, if you just wanted to privately, that you know, just uh, uh, learn a little bit more about see a whole, um, and it just uh, um, uh, Alexi has my 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 uh, email address, and please more than just uh, feel free to reach out to me, okay, and we can set up a meeting to talk more. Uh, 
Um, I have a question. Yes. Hi, Jessica. Um, hi. Um, I just wanted to know the graduates, and you said they're preparing them to be like scientists in academia and industry, but is there, um, I guess, like a higher concentration of like one more than the other? Like, do more go into academia or industry? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, at this moment, I think that I would say about 60% of our graduate go to industry and then 40% is in academia. And so, you know, the, the industry opportunity definitely is, uh, is more so, so it's more, so it kind of the ratio is about the same. It's, it's what it's, it's reflecting to the, 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 the job opportunity. So um, in terms of the, um, the, the decision to go to which track is really it's individual's choice and um, and your passion. So some people actually go to um, uh, teaching and or, or it could be something that not really related to research. So we have students uh, um, went to um, law firm uh, because the science, so um, uh, in terms of uh, that patent law, so so as I mentioned, so so in the law firm, so you, people involved in, in industry patents and and um, a lot of times because the lawyers are necessary to understand the the, the, the biology, the, the the science behind it. So so they will also you know in, in engage like you know they will hire like you know science background person kind of like help the reviews. Um, the 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 protocols in terms of any kind of it is these things make sense. So there are people who who like or are going to like you know people passionate about teaching. So they will go to uh, an institute, not necessarily maybe research is not the primary focus, but by by teaching is the, the primary focus. So um, yeah, so right now it's it's about I would say uh, academic academia uh, versus industry is about forty to sixty percent ratio. Yes. Uh, thank you. Yeah. So I see the chat. Um, uh, want to know a bit more about the admission process of PhD program if you have a complete the master degree of any? Yes. So so the um, the PhD program. So um, we have a centralized um, uh, uh, the um, the portal. So um, the portal uh, it, it it will open in um, uh, it should be beginning of uh, September. Um, so check back to our website. Um, uh, let me see, graduate school, uh, city hall, graduate school. Um, I can send this link, and you can check back. So the, there will be a link uh, to. Oops, um, there, there will be a, a, a link to how to apply to different programs. So in this uh, website, you can see we you, there is a PhD program, there is a, there is a master in translational medicine, tra master in regulatory affair. So there is always, and you can look at um, the, the different uh, programs and description and what fit you. And then you can, um, you know, and then there is a, a click buttons. And, and so for the master programs, once you click the apply now, you will directly link you to the KGSI because our centralized for master program, we have the admissions that, that with the KGI. Um, so with the PhD in translational medicine, pre-request is master in translational medicine because that's how we judge the evaluate whether the students are qualified to advance into the PhD in, in translational medicine. Okay. And so, okay, so uh, okay, yeah. So so that's uh, hopefully answer any question and, and feel free to to browse the uh, and from the website you also can you know look at the uh, you can look at the faculty research and that you know I don't have I didn't have times to like you know go into very details of all different type of research um, but um, if you're you're interested in, in going to either cancer going to um, even diabetes or, or infectious disease uh, research um, you know take a look at our faculty research profiles and if there's something that interests you I encourage you to like you know to to consider as like you know uh, uh, as become part of the the, the our research uh, 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 teams. Okay, so yeah.
I, I know that we are come to the, about one o'clock. So thank you so much. And again, like, you know, um, if, uh, uh, if you have any other questions uh, uh, on the research, on the, on the education or city of home in general, say, and, and uh, yeah, feel free to, 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 to contact me uh, via email. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And thank you everyone for attending. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.